known Gannon-Levine syndrome is a cardiac pre-excitation syndrome, which can lead to arrhythmias and potentially be harmful or even fatal if left unchecked. It's similar to Wolf-Parkinson-White in that electrical conduction bypasses the AV node, and electricity travels directly from SA node down to the ventricles, resulting in a shortened PR interval. Remember that normal cardiac conduction is from SA node to AV node, then down to the ventricles. Normally, electrical conduction through the AV node is slower, resulting in a slight pause, which is displayed on an EKG as the PR interval. In Laun, Ginn, Levine, and other pre-excitation syndromes like WPW, electricity travels from the SA node and then bypasses the AV node to travel directly toward the ventricles. The anatomy and location of these bypass tracks vary and are called accessory pathways. This is where laun gannon levine syndrome differs, but is also similar to WPW. If you've seen our WPW video, remember that conduction to the ventricles also happens through an accessory pathway called the bundle of Kent. In laun gannon levine syndrome, electrical conduction also bypasses the AV node in accessory pathways, but in this case through different fibers called the bundle of James. It's thought that the anatomy of these James fibers vary, but commonly proposed pathways include fibers that course straight through, yet still bypassing the AV node, called intranodal bypass tracks, and fibers that course next to and eventually feeding into the node itself, called atrial nodal tracks. Regardless of how electricity bypasses the AV node, we have evidence that it truly does because people with this syndrome have a shortened PR interval on their electrocardiogram. This is the first electrocardiographic criteria for Laun, Ginn, and Levine. The second thing you'll notice, and also be using to differentiate from Wolf, Parkinson, White, is that in Laun, Ginn, and Levine, there are no delta waves. This makes sense, because remember, in WPW, electricity goes straight from the atria to the ventricles, and the delta wave in WPW represents this early depolarization of the ventricles. In Laun, Ginn, and Levine, the James accessory pathway has a very similar path to normal conduction, and so you don't get this early depolarization and therefore no delta wave. In other words, in Laungan and Levine syndrome, electricity travels a very similar path to normal conduction to get to the ventricles. It just doesn't get slowed down in the AV node, translating simply to a shortened PR interval representing the lack of that AV nodal delay. As a result, you don't see that fusion of the QRS complex with the delta wave. That means, in Laungan and Levine, QRS complexes are narrow as opposed to wide like they are in WPW. So in summary, there are three defining electrocardiographic characteristics of Laungan and Levine. They are a short PR interval, representing the electrical conduction bypassing the AV node's natural response to slow conduction to the ventricles. A lack of a delta wave, representing the bundle of James, which travels a similar path to normal conduction. And finally, a narrow QRS complex, Again, representing the similarity between the anatomical pathway of the bundle of James and normal conduction, resulting in only a shortened PR interval without earlier ventricular depolarization or a delta wave.